Are you born in Neil Teach the Irish dance? Yes, that's it? right, yes. Oh, right. 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 Cunningham, he was a smart fella. And he was, was smart fella, someone yes. says to someone to Barney, but Barney says, there's a cat right there in the yard and I threw her a bit of that food and she's still licking her ass to take the bad taste of her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Ivan, attorneys were brought into this jail. They had political status automatically because they were attorneys. However, from 1972, at least up till 76, after the IRA hunger strike in the jail in 72, anybody coming into the jail for political offences were allowed to keep their own clothes. Anybody else? In 1959, they had a review of the security, so they put out lights all around the place and they increased the size of the wall to cut A wing off to make it more secure. And that gave us our path to freedom. Because we come out, when we cut the bars in the cell, we crawled across here, and at that time that was open, you had the, the, the tunnel, that's the, that's the area into the tunnel, it was just wrought out. On Monday, the 9th of August, 1971, at 4.30am, Irish men from all over the six counties were taken from their homes. Hundreds of these men were then imprisoned without trial in Long Cache concentration camp. This is a song born of the civil resistance campaign which followed internment. A song dedicated to those men in Long Cache. Armored cars and tanks and guns came to take away our sons For every man will stand behind the men behind the wire Through the little streets of Belfast in the dark of early morn Pretty soldiers came marauding, wrecking little homes with scorn He let off the crying children, dragging fathers from their beds Beating sons while helpless mothers watch I had to get my hair cut, you'll see in that photo I had to get my hair cut and I went to Leo McManaman, I saw all this, who I went to get my hair cut and uh, I handed them a half a crown, I handed them two and six I think for to get my hair cut, not realising the money had changed, the money had changed from my I was in. We moved them into temporary accommodation down in case 23 and it was just like a shambles. It's like a bunks three, three on top of other. Like a hay barn. And, and, and water running through the roofs, and it was serious. Uh, Cormorship was good. As being new men were all laid out for a bit of crack uh, for new guys. That's another year. Remember that came out in April, and and the week before I got out, Shake and Stevens was number one with uh, Ain't Gonna Need This House No More. <laughs> and no doubt the song I sung for the last week I was in jail was The Boys Were Sick of It, you know. The screw came into me and read me out this rigmarole of stuff through your release papers and uh, he said I wasn't uh, allowed to have a gun license. And I sort of sniggered a wee bit at him. He said, What's, what do you find so funny? Well, I says, I didn't have a license for the last gun. <laughs> um, well, I've spent, spent a good while at physical exercise, people running. There's a bit of a gym there where I worked out. There was, there was always people running. And if you weren't running, you were walking around the yard. Uh, there were some people who walked from the got out in the morning till they were locked up at night. They'd always said they were having bother doing their whack, but they were doing it their own way to get out. I was trying to break the system. That was an ongoing thing with, I'd say with the big majority of the prisoners in there were always thinking of getting out. Uh, I heard a man one time here saying who did escape, he said that walking out through the gate would have been great. He said to escape was, and that was, that was definitely right. Everybody would love to have escaped. They first out of the jail, prisoners started to hijack cars and vans belonging to people living in the area. One man spoke of seeing at least 10 men packed into one hijacked car, their arms and legs hanging out of the windows. Prison staff also ordered the same man. Here, he came out, you stripped, till you strip him, till you squat over a mirror. He says, no, I'm not fucking doing that, you know? So he grabbed you and forced you, and um, locked up your hole. And that was humiliating, you know, I remember that, you know. And the only reason that was done was, to punish us, you know. No, they, I remember going back to the, the cell and I cried, you know. I was, I was never been so humiliated in my life, you know, and degraded. Uh, the Brits would come in and the Brits raid. So uh, we're all lined up against the wire. There'll be 
Hade Klaus och min... Jo, jag är kärst. Var det kärst? Det hade varit rätt. Det hade Klaus i bed. Det var bara att ta upp det. 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 They put the excrement on the on the walls. He says, "Sure, get yourself on." So anyway, here he is. He goes behind, he puts up the mattress, goes behind, does his, his thing, and next minute he pulls a bit off the mattress. Next minute I see him putting it all over the walls. I couldn't believe it. And for dinner or lunch, whatever you want to call it, it was chicken with all these bones that we had. So he says the best thing you do, Frank, is to put the bones in your hair. You put the longest hair here. You put the bones in your hair. I remember putting the bones in my hair. Screws open what I call for the first things you should do, shower, shave, shape. I looked at the two of us, me standing there with bones in my hair and beard and all, and him standing there and the whole place covered in shape. Next minute, you see them closing the doors and going to have a way to have a discussion. Next minute, they all come down and look in, go away again. Next minute, they all, about 20 screws is looking in your cell, you know what that is? Next minute, it's crude. Next minute, you hear them going down to Big Mac Farm. Big was the OC of the wing at the time. I says the Big. Two blokes up there, they've lost the plot. They really lost the plot. They've got shaped the walls, no one's got fucking bones in his hair. So I said, Vic says, well, it's up themselves. There's nothing I can do about it. Twelve accomplished Gale goers and good Irish teachers from all blocks were moved over to H6. Um, and then they were sort of bedded down and declared a heel tech, in the, uh, which the, the administration were sort of caught in the hop with. It was a long hot summer in '85 because remember it was a very very warm summer, and um, you know I thought it was great being on the Giltech wing. It was uh, first of all there was no English spoken at all, with all conversations so it, it was done as Gilga. Vicious, beaten by male screws, in our jail, male and female screws, which left some of the women with really really serious injuries. Um, so by 19, say by February 1980. The women then were locked in their cells 23 hours a day. Uh, all privileges were taken off them, no toilet facilities. I would have been arrested from home, uh, probably 6 a.m. knock, I think it would have been, and uh, would have been taken to Gough Barracks or Ma. Uh, in Carrickmore, that was our local detention centre. Uh, it used to be, uh, if you live in Straban, you would go to Strand Road, if you lived in Carrickmore you would go to Gough and if you lived maybe in Belfast you'd be taken to Castlery. It was like your local chapel, you know, what chapel do you go to? It was such a happy day, mm -hmm. you know, and the, there was lovely food. She had her wedding dress in and her bridesmaid and we didn't all get to go to the chapel, she was only allowed <laughs> so, many, so many guests and the chapel was like a room over an education block but it, it was the chapel where mass was every time it was on so like it was the and um, I think it was at eight guests or ten guests or something that was allowed in. You know, it's it's our John and Dwayne and Malcolm because I think I give out the names on on the radio, and I couldn't even speak. It was just absolutely and utterly devastating. And that was seven o'clock in the morning, and we weren't unlocked until eight. I think it was the the longest hour, you know, of 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 our lives. So as soon as we did get unlocked, then we went straight down to stairs to Pauline and. As Geraldine had outlined her earlier on, you know, Pauline was, you know, like every, you know, very strong and, um, but in complete and utter shock. Looking back at the three prisons, every every one of them had their ups and downs. Every one of them had their comradeship, and even though I wouldn't like anybody to go to prison, I do think there's things in the prison I will take away with that will always stay with me. And when someone believe in that will be very, very happy with me.
Freedom's fine. 